when I made the team, I kind of realized, like, oh, maybe I'm not just a, a good local kid. Maybe I'm actually good at this sport nationally or provincially. <laughs> Welcome to Caper Spotlight featuring conversations with your Cape Breton University Caper student athletes. And my guest on this occasion, a familiar face, one of the locals on the men's basketball team here at CBU, Mitchell Mercerall. Thanks for uh, spending some time with me this afternoon. My pleasure, Corey. Uh, so, of course, very familiar with the Capers program. You grew up uh, in Sydney. I guess let's go back and start with the sports side of it itself. Um, did you play a lot of sports? I guess how did basketball become uh, the one of choice for you? Yeah, uh, from a young age, I kind of was just thrown into whatever sports uh, and see what stuck kind of attitude. So I tried multiple things. Uh, surprisingly, the only sport I didn't try was hockey, which is kind of funny for being a Cape Breton boy, but uh, I'm kind of thankful for that now. Uh, so yeah, I, I played basketball from a young age. I just genuinely liked it and helped out that I was a little bit of a bigger kid. So uh, success was imminent. Uh, but yeah, I tried everything. I had fun with most. Uh, I wasn't the most confident kid, so I wasn't really comfortable in a lot of sporting situations, but with basketball and working with the team, it's kind of something that allowed me to get comfortable and I, I thrived in. The sport itself, what a, what appealed to you once you get on the court and start at the play and, and sharpen and improve your skills? Yeah, um, I think a lot to do with it was the fact that you're in a team of five. Uh, I know a lot, a lot of guys you might talk to that know me is like I, I like playing with teammates I like working well with teammates I'm not very much an individualist player uh, and I think that's just something I have from a young age I like working with people working alongside me as a group trying to get a win or as a group trying to improve but I think that's one thing I kind of felt like it took uh, the attention away from me as a as, as I said I wasn't really a confident kid so the kind of the the shared blame and the shared success was something that kind of appealed to me when did you and maybe there wasn't a conscious moment but uh you're growing up you're playing minor ball in school and, and such when did you start thinking yeah oh, hey i'm i'm pretty pretty good at this this might uh take me some places yeah i'm not sure if there was a real conscious kind of flip of the switch uh i think one major kind of keystone in my my career was playing for Team Nova Scotia on the U-17 team in 2019. Uh, I've never tried out for a team like that before. I've always played for local Cape Breton organizations. But me and a few of my buddies were like, oh, why not? Like, we're good basketball players. Let's, let's, let's go try it. And uh, I did quite well at the tryouts. And when I made the team, I kind of realized, like, oh, maybe I'm not just a a good local kid uh, maybe i'm actually good at this sport nationally or provincially and i think that might have been with some conscious i don't know reminder but of a, a thing that taught me that maybe i this is something i need to put a little bit more effort in because i might have a future okay so you go along you had that provincial experience you play of course high school and, and do quite well at riverview we're all high for people not familiar with our area and Coxie, so you're again very much a, a hometown caper for sure. Um, so take me through the recruiting side a little bit, uh, how you ended up choosing CBU, and I know it was much more than just the the chance to wear the caper orange as well. Yeah, um, yeah, I think honestly, in my grade 11 years, when I started to get some interest from schools and talking to some people and might be interest but it was always kind of a, a side conversation nothing set in stone then my my performance with basketball Scotia definitely kind of set my feet in the ground of like okay this kid has the abilities to play at the next level and I think that uh, gave coaches the kind of the, the, the guidance that said this you could take a chance on me um, and then with that me and coach Matt Skins in my grade 11 year and then 
Obviously, in my grade 12 year, we're in close contact. I've been around the university my whole life. For people who don't know, both my parents work at CBU. So I've been around the university and the men's basketball team from a very young age. So me and Matt had a relationship before he would even consider taking me on a team. So once I kind of established myself as a, a standout basketball player on the island, I mean, CBU was always kind of at the forefront. Uh, like I said, my parents work here. I've, lived on Cape Breton my whole life. When me and Matt actually set in some stone some uh, some ideas and gave me an offer, I, it was a, a very easy decision for me. I, I've been around Capers athletes as long as I, as soon as I started playing basketball, I was around Capers athletes. So that kind of pedestal that I held them on didn't seem real to me that I was at that caliber. Cause I still felt like the, the five kid who had been coached by Kenny Jean-Louis and stuff like that. So uh, it was a bit of a surreal moment. Um, it was an easy decision. So you're well into your caper uh, career now. I guess let's go back to the beginning of it. How did it for again, as you said, a true blue caper? Uh, how did it come about or how did it feel to don the caper orange for that first time? I'm in a in a different in a in a strange session because my first year was 2020, uh, the peak of the pandemic. So even when I talk with my teammates, I get confused on what year was my first year because I never got to play a game in my inaugural year. Um, it was just a lot of practices, and I think that was honestly good for me. Uh, the transition from high school to college is more significant than a lot of people think. Very well-known capers, uh, all over very good leaders, and kind of taught me everything that it needs to be to be like not only a university basketball player but an actual caper. So I was grateful for my first year to a very much of a learning process and a learning year. And then once the second year came, I felt really prepared to actually play in the orange, and I, I was very happy to play my first game. It felt. Like it was a long time coming, a year of practice just for my first game. So it was definitely a lot of learning, but grateful learnings for sure. Before we go deeper into your time on the court, talk a little bit about, and I know you're always trying to improve as all athletes are, uh, but what uh, skill set, what attributes do you think you bring to the, to the team and the game that are your strengths? Yeah, um, throughout my entire career, I've just always been a very level-headed player. I don't get too high, I don't get too low. And I think that's honestly a, a strong attribute of mine. And one of the reasons I was successful in high school is because I was the leader that wouldn't yell at someone. I would just more lead by example and tell them, hey, you gotta do this, this, and this. Or there was no negative or explosive personality that came from me. That's just the, the person I always was and the player I am. And if you talk to some of my high school coaches, they feel that one of the major reasons I was recruited to play for CBU is because you sometimes you need a leader that isn't uh, an explosive um, leader. I am vocal, but more of a lead by example and come follow me kind of leadership style. And uh, I think using that to my advantage really helped me kind of establish myself at CBU uh, and get people to buy into my kind of habits. Uh, I don't work hard just on the basketball court. I got a lot of other things to work hard on. And being a caper athlete, that's a significant thing. Like we're a small community. So the us as individuals and as athletes, we have a lot more of a role to play than just play 40 minute games every weekend. There's a lot more things you have to put the effort into and actually impact the community you're playing for. Let's talk about those things a little bit. Academically, of course, you're the consummate student athlete, not just an athlete. And of course, you were recognized for that this season with the AUS's Community Service Award for, for men's basketball. Talk a little bit, I guess, not only about receiving that award. I know it's not about awards, but still something to be proud of. And then a little bit about some of the uh, community elements of what you've done at CBU, whether on campus, and I know also in the broader community. 
Yeah, so I'll start with kind of the, the academic side. Um, with my both my parents working here and my mother being a professor, uh, academics has been a, a strong suit and a very important thing in my life, not just in university. Uh, my, my mom is one of the smartest pre people I know, and she's always striving me to work towards that. And I think that's just kind of something that is like as a CBU athlete, it's, it's almost handed to you. You're like you have this amazing opportunity, not only play for CBU, but to get an education for CBU. Uh, people are always willing to help. Uh, nobody's going against you. They just want to see you succeed. And I think as a CBU athlete, it's so easy to do well because we have a university that supports us so much. Um, but academics is one of those things that I've always worked towards because I'm not just an athlete. Uh, I'm an athlete until potentially next year. That could be my final year being an, an athlete. So the, the student part really comes into play after you're done being an athlete. So you have to do the work during your time as an athlete so that you're successful after the fact. All of us, all of the athletes at CBU are very much in tune with the fact that we have to work towards to become a successful athlete. But to be a successful athlete, you have to be successful students and you're a student of the game and you have to learn these things. And I think the the academic side, I think sometimes it's overlooked, but I think it's integral to not only your internal discipline, but your success as well. The academic side, uh, I guess, career aspirations, what are you uh, focused on in the classroom and where do you want that path to take you? Yeah. Um, so physiotherapy has been my academic dream for a very long time, kind of with my my expertise in, in athletics and uh, my interest in biology. It's always been something I've been working towards ever since high school. It's, I've known that's what I wanted to do. And I've actually had some good opportunities with CBU to uh, partner with them to help other students like me that are interested in physiotherapy and provide a pathway for them. So that is something I've always been working towards in my, my academic uh, goals and dreams. And I'm almost there when you start applying uh, next year. So I'm very excited for that. How do you balance, and I usually ask student athletes, this is really a, basically a full-time job being a, an athlete, a varsity athlete at a university, and then you have a full academic schedule. I guess what's the, the secret sauce for Mitchell Mercer to getting things done and getting them done well? Honestly, it's just putting your head down. Uh, as athletes, it's easy to work hard at something you, you like. Uh, luckily for me, I like school and I like basketball, so it's easy for me to work hard. But it's if you work hard, everything kind of falls into place, or so far so good, at least. Um, and I think all athletes understand that it's a direct relationship to how much work you put in to how much success you're going to get on the other side. So the, the time management is definitely a skill you learn, but time is easy when you use your time effectively and you work hard with the time that you, you give yourself. And of course, if two busy prongs weren't enough, I know you're heavily involved in, in the community, uh, both through sport and otherwise. Can you talk a little bit about some of the efforts uh, you've taken on to give back not only to CBU but the broader Cape Breton community. Yeah, as I, as I talked about before, uh, I've been a, a local basketball player. I've lived here my whole life. Uh, when I was five years old to I was 12 years old, I was at basketball camps at the university. So I understand the, the impact us as athletes at CBU have on the youth. And I didn't really realize that I was that coach or that player that is now in those shoes of the athletes that I looked up to 10, 12 years ago. It, it's, it's interesting to see myself in a position where I have the same influence that those coaches had on me or those athletes had on me. So uh, pretty much as soon as I got to the university, I realized the impact I can have and the impact that I should have as a local athlete because I know what they do for kids on the island. So ever since I kind of internally understood what my role is, not as just an athlete on the court, but an athlete for the youth on the island, 
I kind of took a kin to that and I want to do as much as I can. I, I've done a lot of things on campus uh, throughout the, the school semesters and most recently this summer I've worked with uh, Basketball Cape Breton to provide uh, summer programming for all different ages and I kind of just wanted to use my my opportunity that I have as a, a local CBU athlete who is, is making a way for more CBU athletes like me to come in the future. There's not many of us who grow up on the island and have this amazing opportunity to play for the Capers. So I want to make sure that I'm using my, my very specific opportunity to do as much as I can. I know you're, as you mentioned, an aspiring physiotherapist uh, down the line, but I'll get you to wear the hat of a CBU recruiter uh, for a few minutes and make your pitch or if you're speaking to someone about whether it's a student athlete or or a student in general no matter what uh, I guess path they take um, mm -hmm. why is CBU so special and why would you recommend it to them obviously I have a little bit of a, a bias towards CBU but honestly it's such a close-knit community and an institution that it doesn't even feel like a school. Uh, I tell this to a lot of recruits that come onto our team. We always take them out for supper and me and my teammates always outline, hey, this is not like any other school. This is a little bit different. Uh, the school, the teachers here, the supporting staff, the coaches, they're all, they all want you to succeed. And I know every school probably says that, like everybody wants you to succeed, everybody's gonna help you, but like truly, Teachers here and staff want you to succeed. They know who you are. Everybody knows that you're a, a CBU athlete and they all want to see you have success, not only on the court, but in the classroom. And, and with my uh, focus on and off the court and in and out of the classroom, it's so easy to thrive in a situation like this because if you're struggling, there is multiple people that will help you out. If you succeed, it gives me multiple people to congratulate you. There, there's so much support within the institution and within this community that it, it's honestly amazing. Not even just in the in the university itself. Me and some of my teammates will be poking groceries and we'll get stopped by little kids, families, mothers, daughters, and they'll all congratulate, oh, you had a great game. Or, oh, I heard you doing this. It, everybody knows who you are and they all love what you're doing and truly support you no matter what you do. Uh, you're back, you're on, pardon me, the back end of your caper experience, I guess what's left on the the to do or the aspirational list as you as you wind down. Well, you'll always be a caper, but as you wind down your student athlete side of things. Yeah, uh, this is a conversation me and Matt had not too long ago, and it was a bit of a a, a bit of a punch to the gut to realize I'm on my kind of way out. It's interesting to kind of shift my role a little bit, but as I kind of mentioned before, my my leadership uh, qualities is what really allowed me to thrive at CBU and on the basketball court. And me and Matt have discussed that my kind of next step along my athletic path is to pass down my leadership qualities to the next. So as I said, my first year, I had some really good leaders like Ozzy and Paul, who kind of taught me the ropes understand what is expected, what's not expected, how to thrive, how to act. Um, and then I kind of used that for the last two, three years to do it myself. And now I'm in their kind of place where I have to do it to the next. And I think we have some really good guys that are really going to take to it. And I think that's my next goal. In my following year, obviously, I want to succeed uh, or continue to succeed as an athlete at CBU and also as a student at CBU. But I really need to ensure that I pass down my my secrets to success to the next players or the next students and, and kind of challenge them to accept uh, what it means to be a caper. One last question, a little bit of an indulgence of mine and somewhat at a left field, the headbands. Where did that come into your, <laughs> I would say repertoire, but into your uniform, your wardrobe? I love yeah. them and... Uh, I usually mention them in the, the webcast at times. So when did that become part of uh, Mitchell Mercerell, the headband? Yeah, this is, this is a, definitely a recent development. If, uh, 
if anybody has known me before my time at CBU, I've had the, the same haircut my entire life. And then all of a sudden last year, I said, all right, let's change it up a little bit. I'm going to grow my hair out. And I started to like the look of it, but sooner rather than later, every time I was taking a jump shot, my hair would come down and hit me in the eye. So I said, okay, either the hair's got to go or I got to do something about <laughs> this. So some of my teammates suggested a headband and I was completely against it. I'm like, no, I can't do that. I'll look foolish. And but one or two headbands later, now it's kind of my thing. And if anybody comes to see view games and you watch the intro, you always see me point to a guy in the, in the crowd. And <laughs> It's actually my dad, he's wearing a headband for the intro because he finds it silly that I wear one. So if you ever see a guy at the CV stands wearing a headband and he doesn't look like he should be wearing one, it's probably my dad. So there you've started. We need to start a trend for next season. Everyone, the headbands in the crowd, maybe. Yeah. A good we luck term. Some team headbands. <laughs> well, thanks so much for your time. I Thank enjoyed you, chatting. I'm glad I got the headband question in. And it, was, yeah. it had more to it than I thought, so I'm yeah. somewhat pleased. Um, again, good luck with uh, the rest of your academic year, and we can't wait to see you and your teammates back on the, the court next season. And again, we appreciate your time. Perfect. Thank you very much, Corey. That I'll like to see you sport a headband soon as well. Okay, I'll wear, first webcast of the season, I'll wear one. Perfect. In 2024. <laughs> That was Mitchell Mercer, all the consummate CBU student athlete with or without the headband. And he <laughs> was your guest today on the Caper Spotlight. I'm Corey LeBlanc. Thank you for watching and go. listening. And good afternoon.